Hello and welcome. I'm Steve Clemens, Editor-at-Large of The Hill. I'm glad you could join us today for the future of education, a virtual summit. We're going to have two parts to this big topic. Learning has undergone a transformation during the COVID-19 pandemic. Forced to move beyond the four walls of the classroom, education went virtual last spring. And now as schools begin to reopen, there are a lot of questions about student preparedness and how to ensure health and safe environments for all around. Questions about the homework gap. We're going to get into all of that. This is a tumultuous time, but as we move forward, it's worth thinking about the future of education, the tech tools we would like to continue to rely on, and building inclusive learning environments. The first hour of our summit will focus on equity and how all students can can have access to the tools they need to succeed. Our second hour is going to dive into how technology is shifting the education landscape. We'll be talking to players pushing us forward. I'd like to thank our sponsors, really thank our sponsors. This is an important conversation. So thank you to Nokia and thank you to the American Federation of Teachers for their support of today's event. Got a great lineup of speakers, teachers, students, parent advocates, state and federal policymakers, and many, many more. Before we get underway, a few housekeeping notes. You can tweet us at at the Hill events. That's at the little at sign, the Hill events, using the hashtag, hashtag the Hill Ed, the Hill ED. We're broadcasting live. We'll be taking your questions throughout the program. If you experience any trouble with the live stream, just click refresh. It fix, should fix everything. And one quick thing, I want to just do a shout out because today is important. This is about education for everybody. My high school teacher, my writing teacher, my literature teacher just passed. Cindy Goodwin from Quitman, Texas. I had her in Japan. Yeah, we did a memorial service. We were COVID safe. But about 150 of her students showed up at her memorial service for many, many generations to pay tribute to her and how she had impacted their lives. And I just want to say a shout out to all teachers out there. I'm about to talk to another teacher who happens to be serving in Congress uh, in just a moment. But I wanted to say a shout out to all teachers today. You, you really changed lives. My first guest today serves on the Education and Labor Committee and is co-chair of the bipartisan HBCU Congress. That's the historical Black Colleges uh, uh, and Universities Caucus. Before entering Congress, Representative Alma Adams earned her Ph.D. in art and multicultural education. She taught art history for 40 years. So, Congresswoman Adams, it's great to see you again. I just gave all teachers a shout out, but I want to give you a shout out, too, because you've made education really just the blazing cause of your time in Congress. Um, So why don't we start there? Uh, I'd like to just give you a moment to talk about how you move the needle on permanent funding for minority educational institutions, not just HBCUs, but across the board. Well, thank you so much for uh, having me. It's good to talk to you. And thank you for shouting out to teachers. Uh, That's a good thing. They do change lives. My daughter has been teaching for 20 years. She's now a principal. Uh, So I want to shout out to her today as well. Uh, Well, we the first thing I did was to start the bipartisan HBCU caucus. And uh, we're now uh, in our fourth year of STEAM Day, the STEAM Day of Action, which is really several days now. It actually started on Monday, and it's proven to be pretty successful. Uh, uh, By that, of course, uh, science, technology, engineering, uh, mathematics, and, of course, the arts. We put the the, the A in STEAM for that. Uh, Because, you know, I believe that this intersection of uh, of the two is is key to the future. Uh, When we look at HBCUs and, and all that they do, they impact our workforce producing 27% of STEM graduates, 40% of African-American engineers, 50% of African-American lawyers and public school teachers, and 80% of all of our judges. So, and in addition, contributing about $15 billion uh, to the economy. Uh, So STEAM Day is important. Uh, HBCUs come to Capitol Hill to advocate. Uh, They're joined by industry leaders and so forth. And so this bipartisan caucus has worked together uh, not only um, across the aisle, but uh, in both chambers. It is by camera. And uh, we want to make sure that um, all students, uh, HBCU students, students of MSIs, uh, have uh, what they need. So we've worked together. And yes, we've, uh, we have increased uh, the funding overall. And I think it's about educating. It was three purposes, mm-hmm. to educate the community at large, to educate our staff, and, uh, and members of Congress, and then to find solutions for bipartisan uh, legislation. And we've been able to do that. We've increased the resources, and we're gonna to continue to work on that because with, pan- with the pandemic, uh, all of our schools have suffered uh, so much. And uh, you know, in order for us mm-hmm. to, to open up our economy, we gotta get our schools opened up as well. Representative Adams, when, when you and I last talked, we were down in Charlotte, 
I had an incredible conversation. We talked a little bit about the systemic racism in this country, you know, the, the you know, economic divides in this country. Part of our discussion today is, hey, you know, there's aspirations tied up in education and you can get people, you know, amped up, you know, give them uh, exposure, get them educated. You know, my high school teacher, Cindy Ed, you know, Goodwin, used to say, isn't education wonderful because it opens doors? But those doors have to want to be open. They have to be forced to be open. And I guess as, as you emphasize education, are you beginning to get a sense that some of the other barriers and blocks to black and brown people in this country are going to be kicked open? Well, absolutely. I think so. You know, and when you think about uh, what has happened, you know, we've been in this um, uh, COVID uh, uh, arena for now a, a, a year, and uh, many things have been uncovered, uh, particularly the disparities that exist in terms of, of the health of black and brown people, uh, many of the, uh, the cultural kinds of disparities as well. And so I, I think that uh, people are becoming uh, more enlightened. Uh, and as a result, uh, communities are becoming more engaged uh, and realizing that we really uh, must work on these issues and to try to, and, and in order to do that, to make sure that things happen for every child in every community, uh, that we've got to uh, make the kinds of investments that are needed uh, in education to make sure that we have this equitable access uh, because we do have uh, so many vulnerable and marginalized communities. And mm. uh, I think that Congress has a role in education. And uh, I've always believed that. So, um, you know, we're working on it. Mm. Um, I think everyone kind of knows that that it is a problem. Uh, right. And uh, many people have different solutions about how to how to solve it, but how to solve those problems. But there are some specific things that we can do in Congress in terms of the Every Student Succeeds Act, the um, Higher Education Act, and and also the, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, all these things. And so we're working through uh, the Education um, uh, Committee and, and uh, our chair, um, Congressman Bobby Scott, uh, is, is giving a tremendous leadership in that regard. You know, on, on the HBCU, uh, HBCU STEAM days, you know, historically black colleges and universities STEAM days, um, one of the things you have is a partnership challenge, working with potential employers to come in. I want to give you a chance to say, do you have enough employers lining up? Do you need more? Oh, we always need more. We have, what, about 56 right now. Uh, and, uh, you know, when we started, we only had two or three. Uh, we, we're now in our fourth year. Uh, and um, full steam ahead. Uh, people are realizing, corporations are realizing, industry is realizing that uh, in order for them to think about uh, really having a diverse workforce, and everybody's talking about DNI, and uh, that clearly you can't do that without taking a look, a serious look at, uh, at uh, the, the HBCU lineup and what, uh, you know, we've got a great pipeline there. And so uh, this is why I think people are coming in and uh, we're excited about it. We've had five uh, to, to join just, uh, just over the next, uh, the past couple of days. Uh, so the word's getting out there. Uh, you know, everybody wants to be a part of a good thing, a successful yeah. thing. And so, yeah, this is what's going on. You know, Representative Adams, um, I guess I've been talking about the digital divide for a big chunk of my life, and I'm sure you have too, and I'm looking forward to not talking about it someday after it's solved. But it sort of seems like the pandemic, uh, education, and so much of the rest of our life going online has raised this issue that those that are not online, that are not connected, are really the, the, the next generation of marginalized folks in our, in our country. I'm interested, you know, as a legislator, as you talk to your colleagues, how serious are they finally about getting the money, the resources, the, the innovative approaches to finally getting universal connectivity, particularly in education? Well, I, I will tell you that we're absolutely very serious about it. Um, everybody's not only talking about it, we're not just talking to talk, we're gonna walk the walk too. Uh, we're going to pass a package out today that's going to help, but then we're going to be looking at uh, pass this a, 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 an infrastructure bill, which would include uh, all of those things. You're right in terms of the connectivity. Uh, many of our young people who come from uh, communities that don't have the, um, the, the connectivity that they need, they still have difficulty. They're going off to 
uh, various places, uh, 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 McDonald's and other places to, to connect up. And so even having um, access to the equipment, say the laptops that many of our schools are providing, if you're not able to connect that somewhere, you still have a problem. So I think Congress uh, finally realizes that. And, and uh, it is, um, it's, uh, we have included uh, uh, the, bro the um, uh, broadband in, uh, in many of the uh, pieces of legislation that we have put together that would help uh, throughout this pandemic. And we're gonna continue to do it because uh, we, we know that it's necessary. And if students are not connected, then they're not connected, if you know what right. I mean. Alma, let me ask you just one last question. Um, you mentioned your daughter is a teacher. A little while, I'm going to be talking to Randy Weingarten of the American Federation of Teachers just about how to get schools reopened, what we need to think about, and then getting back to thinking about the whole child uh, out there and what our responsibilities are. And get there. I'd just love to hear how your daughter's doing. And, and you know, is she, does she have what she needs to, to educate these kids? What are the parts of the story that we ought to know about in terms of a personal perspective of your daughter out on the front line teaching, you know, our children? Well, she's a first year principal. She was an assistant principal for two years. And uh, they're dealing with uh, situations where uh, sometimes they're gonna have to, they have to close classrooms because of COVID. Um, uh, they have uh, needs like all, I think, think uh, schools all over the country uh, for better ventilation systems to make sure that uh, they have the resources in the schools to open it safely, to do their work safely, uh, to make sure that even just putting the, uh, the signage down on the floor as to where you step and those kinds of things, uh, making sure that uh, you, you have your ventilation systems uh, your reduction in your class sizes be, because we want to provide for social distancing guidelines. So she's, you know, really looking at all those things. But I think if we can, and we should, as a Congress, provide the resources to our schools, uh, they can do what is necessary to really get our schools open and get these kids back in school. We want schools open. Of course we do. I'm a grandmother. I want my grandchildren back in school, mm. but we want them uh, to be open safely. And so as the saying go up, go, goes, we're going to put our money where our mouth is and we've got to do more than just pay lip service to our educators. Make sure that they're all vaccinated. Mm. Uh, you know, I had a, 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 I, I impressed upon uh, the president and and my staff through bills and, and legislation that we've got to make sure that we do that. They are essential workers as well. So uh, we've got still a lot to do, but our kids want to go back to school. Our teachers want them back in there, uh, but we want everybody to be safe. Well, I just want to point out to the to everyone watching that Representative Alma Adams you know, got a, a, a bill, hundreds of millions of dollars a year for historically black colleges and universities and other minority education. She got that passed with Donald Trump signing that legislation. And so you may very well be the most successful Democratic legislator with President Trump in my book. But thank you so much for joining us. I also want to tell our audience that tomorrow, uh, Representative Adams will be uh, hosting, and I think she, you can watch online, Pandemics and Partnerships, How Public and Private Sector Engagement Can Propel a COVID Recovery. Representative Adams, I always love talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us at The Hill today. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for keeping our public informed. Uh, it is a good thing. You know, uh, knowledge is power. Uh, and uh, that, that helps us to get to where we need to go. Thank you so very much. Good joining you today.